Let's call and call a meeting to order. <clears throat> uh, minutes from the last meeting. I think everybody's got copies. Uh, I, so I think we can waive reading them unless someone has any additions or corrections. No changes to propose. Pardon me? I have no changes to propose. Larry? None. Okay. Uh, we'll assume they'll stand as written. Um, I thought we had an excellent tour. Marianne, you did an excellent job of uh, explaining the facilities to us and, and uh, showing us around. Uh, personally, I learned a lot. Uh, Brian or Larry, any, any comments on the tour? I also learned a lot. Um, I was thankful for the person who gave me a ride. <laughs> tour guide. Yeah. Yes, um, everything's all laid out well and was was defined correctly, the channel, the sump, the lake, um, different communities or areas of the lake that we, we toured, that was all, was all good information. So it helps to put feet on the ground and, and really understand what, what we're looking at. That made a big difference. Yeah, yeah thanks again, Marianne. <clears throat> um, that's Talk about how these assessments are calculated. Uh, it's uh, one of the questions I've got for Casey when we go into executive session. I know it's beyond uh, our scope of work, but uh, uh, based on all the comments that have come in so far, it sounds like there's, I feel there's uh, some inequities in the methods of calculation. I, um, I have a a little kind of a PowerPoint I can walk through to kind of help explain that if you'd, if you'd like, Gary. Yes, I, I think it'd be very helpful. Uh, okay. Because it seems to seem, it seems to be common in all the uh, comments are, quote, fair and equitable. And uh, uh, I don't know <clears throat> what the RCW is say on that subject, but uh, uh, these forest reserves, uh, the senior citizen exemptions, uh, agricultural classifications all seem to cut the, they all use the taxable value rather than the market value. And I don't know how Larry and Brian feel about it, but <clears throat> I think to be fair and equitable, it needs to be based on the market value and not the taxable value. Um, yeah, I can um, explain a little of that. Shall I just go ahead and um, share my screen here and walk through it or? Sure. Okay, um, let me see, get it in presentation mode here. Oh, okay. Okay, er, um, let's see. Okay, can um, can everyone see my screen? Should be just yes. the title. Yes. All right. So um, so yeah. So figure out how I'm going to move forward here. It's a little bit different when you're screen sharing. Okay. Um, so just 
briefly the back background is, of course, right now we're using the, the current benefit maps, um, which um, um, and these current current benefit areas and each parcel based on their location on the map is assigned um, assigned a benefit. Um, <clears throat> also, it's assigned one for flood control and one for water quality, and those are those calculations are done separately um, and then added together at the end. Um, some parcels, there's 66 of them, um, are split between multiple benefit areas. And um, kind of one of the things to keep in mind is there is that when the two, both of these uh, maps were adopted, the benefit maps were adopted, the alternate method of determining rates was chosen. And that, that basically means that its calculations are based on values, not area of the parcel. So it takes into account the values in doing the rates. So, um, so this is the sections out of the RCW. Um, and the main, the main one, 8609-409, as an independent and alternate method to any other method here and authorized and subject to the prior um, written approval of the county legislative authority. Uh, da, 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 da. The ratio of benefits herein mentioned may be determined in relation to their relative values of the respective benefit lands, including their improvements thereon. Okay. And the same. Uh, Marianne, let me just interrupt for a minute. You bet. That. that uh... Uh, uh, what I read in the RCW is also and it, the, the uh, statement is here in relation to the relative values the relative values to me is market value not taxable value well um, Casey can maybe more directly ad address that but um when we posed that question here a couple of years ago, um, our, the legal interpretation on it was it could be either. And historically, we have used taxable value. And, that, and that's where the, a lot of the inequities come in, I think. I, I could Some, <clears throat> provide you my legal opinion in, a, in an executive session and rationale behind that. Okay. So we could we could save this uh, and discuss this uh, uh, later. Sounds good. Welcome Perfect. back, Casey. Thank you. It's good to be back. It's uh, a lot of email, emails to get caught up on. So, How many holes of golf did you play? I ended up playing 36. So I played <laughs> uh, the Poipu Bay. Uh, and I played uh, the Mackay on Kauai, which was amazing. Uh -huh. well, didn't Brian's play very well. Didn't, didn't play very well, but very, very beautiful courses. Brian's a big golfer, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be bad. Okay. Um, just as a quick, quick overview, um, you know, we showed you these maps on the tour, but um, this kind of outlines the, um, the kind of colored shading outlines the flood benefit areas and, um, you know, zooming in on, on some detail. Um, you can see that, you know, in some cases there's whole parcels, in some cases, um, like along in here, um, parcels are split. Um, portions of the parcel are considered non-benefit areas and some are benefit. Um, and the same thing on the water quality side. Um, and notice, yep. And then um, similarly, um, on the water quality side, there are some cases where there are portions, parcels, some cases there are whole. These yellow areas are the tertiary parcels. Um, 
blue primary, secondary, tertiary, and then the um, ag lands in the case of water quality um, pay less or in a lower benefit area. Um, and we had talked about this before, but um, basically each, each of these areas is assigned a benefit ratio and um, all the parcels in the no, district no. Are, are assigned a class from one to five for flood control and water quality with five being zero benefit ratio. And, and any questions as you go along, just let me know. So, um, so kind of getting into how we actually do the calculations. Um, so we take um, an adjusted um, value for each. Um, we calculate an adjusted value for each property. And we do that by taking the um, parcel benefit ratio, the percentage, and multiply it by their taxable assessed value to get the parcel's adjusted value. Um, and then we total all the adjusted values of the properties in the district to come up with a total district adjusted value. Um, then an assessment rate for the year is calculated based on the approved district budget for that upcoming year, the amount of assessments that we had been decided we needed and was approved by the board. And we divide that by the total district invested value to come up with an, uh, a levy rate basically for each. Um, and just as a reminder, again, this is done individually for flood control for each parcel and then separately for water quality for each parcel. Um, and then so this at the end, finally, um, the whoops, sorry, bumped ahead by mistake. Um, the parcels adjusted value is multiplied by that levy rate to come up with the parcels district assessment. Um, and it's done for flood control and then it's done for water quality. And then they're added together for a total parcel assessment for the district. Um, and the, the result of that is a 200 page list of all the parcels in the district listed out um, with their um, identified what their class codes are, percentages, what those adjusted values are, and the total charges um, for each parcel. And that's what's called the um, flood control zone district assessment role. Um, maybe we'll kind of go over this um, later too, but um, just as we had talked historically, we've always used the taxable value. Um, and as you noted, the taxable value does take into account the current use program, tax deferrals, and um, is in some cases lower. Um, there are only 34 parcels out of the 760 parcels with assessments that have a different market value versus assess versus um, um, assessed value. So, excuse me, market value versus taxable value. It's only 34 parcels. So, um, other value considerations, um, senior and disability exemptions are not um, applicable for special districts assessment roles. So anything with a C, they, they do not get a reduced valuation um, for the purposes of doing our calculations. Um, also government owned properties pay assessment fees. 
And um, when it comes to split parcels, structure values historically have been included with the total taxable value. So wherever uh, structure is on the parcel isn't necessarily taken into account in how that calculation is done. So to be able to do that, um, we would need to set up a special method for those parcels um, with probably some additional information from the assessor's office. And again, that would be a change from the historical method and require um, you know, a lot of um, outreach, et cetera. So, so tell me how it's calculated now. Um, on a we'll kind of, parcel. We'll, yeah, so we'll we'll kind of go through that here in a little bit because I used as one of the examples a, a split parcel. But basically what it means is that it's all done as a, if a split parcel, the total valuation structures and land is included all together. So if a parcel is 50% in one benefit area and 50% in another, it's based on 50% of the total value. What do you mean by public outreach? Uh, whoops, sorry. Um, in other words, um, it's a good, good question. Um, we had considered a couple of years, um, actually it might have even been a little over a year ago, um, some of these changes. One is because um, we were, it, it was, you know, slow getting you guys on board and um, but what we decided was if we did to try to do any of these changes that um, one is, is they would be difficult to do the calculations, but also it would be quite a significant, um, uh, we'd have to get, we'd have to let people know and get their input um, into that whole decision process before we made the changes, just because that's the way it's always been done. And, so, and that would be aside from any legal question. Um, anyway, that's, does that kind of answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, so here we are already. Um, so here's kind of a, a sample to run through and I picked the split parcel just because it's um, um, a little more complicated, but, um, it would work the same for a single parcel. You just wouldn't have to do the, the first part of it. And that is um, um, splitting, splitting things up. So, so here's an example of a, of a split parcel on the west side of the lake. Um, in this case, 13% of it is in um, benefit area three. And this is for the flood benefit. Um, so you can see here the light blue is three at 50%. And 87% um, of the parcel is not included in the benefit area. So how we do the calculation on that is, is that we, we take segment A, 0% um, and 80 um, benefit and segment B, which is 50%, 13%. And we take the um, the current use or taxable value, um, and we multiply. Well, in case of segment A, of course, it's zero percent benefit. So segment A um, of the percentage of the benefit times the percent of area times the value ends up zero. For segment B, um, the benefit class is 50%, the area is 13%. So the um, adjusted value becomes 50% times 13 times the total value of 674,260 or 43,826. Marianne? Yeah. So you confirm under this um, methodology that you're valuing 
every acre of that property as being the same? Correct. Yeah, we don't, with this current methodology, we don't take into account um, the different the different values of the of the each segment of the property. And in in doing that, you can see how you're you could be it could be interpreted that you're undervaluing segment B. Correct. Okay. And um, part of it is that, well, yeah, to go into, but, but yes, that's the way it's currently been done, being done. Okay. If, if you guys would like to go into executive session now to discuss uh, kind of legal rationale behind some of this, uh, I'd be more than happy to discuss that now, if, if that would be a good time. I support that idea. So we would need a just a uh, essentially a motion to uh, enter into an executive session, and then also we have to specify for the set period of time. So say fifteen minutes. I move we go into executive session for fifteen minutes. Second. Okay. All right. And uh, there is no discussion on this motion. Is uh, everybody in favor of that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I believe that we have a link uh, that uh, would get us over to the executive session. So I will uh, leave this meeting and then click on the executive session link. Does everybody have a copy of that link? I'll I'll resend it for everyone. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Ron. Okay. Okay, so we leave this one, and then go to the executive session link. Yeah. Okay. So we actually uh, like close this Zoom so meeting. For for um for people that are watching um so they can come back on on the current link in about fifteen minutes. Yeah. So, so everyone hit. everyone here will log off, and then everyone in the audience will stay on here. And then once we've concluded executive session, everyone will just log back on here. If that makes sense. I'll we'll explain it when when we get get over there. So it's not that we hit stop video, it's that we hit the X up, the X button in the top right of the, of the window. Yeah, or leave meeting, the red button too. Leave meeting. Should be in the lower right hand corner, little red button that says leave. If you, if you swing your cursor down there. Okay, I see that. But lower right hand corner does what? Leave, so hit the leave button and then you use the link that um, okay. Ron is sending us now. Okay. So.